Hey, I'm Ryan with Warm Discovers, and today I'm going to show you how to connect your Mitsubishi units to Home Assistant using a very convenient CN105 ESP Home GitHub project. Now, the only thing you're actually going to need is this, and this is an ESP32 S3. You can also use a couple other devices, but I chose to use the S3, and this connects to your Mitsubishi on the inside. Now I bought a couple of these ESP32 S3s on Amazon for around $20 and you can get a pack of three just like this and they come with breakable headers and the actual S3 device inside. Now what we'll basically do is wire up this cabling to the S3 which will communicate over the UART communication on the Mitsubishi device itself and the S3 will actually connect to Home Assistant over the network. You can configure it any way you want, but this is gonna demonstrate how to do that. I'll have a link in the description for the CN105 connector, and what we'll basically do is cut the ends off and solder it up to our ESP32. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how I soldered this up. Okay, so let's show the soldering process here. So we have the connector that goes into the Mitsubishi, and we're gonna just cut off the ends here. And as it goes, this is pin one down here. So first we have 12 volts and then ground and then five volts and then TX and RX. Now we're gonna have to cut off the first pin because we're not using 12 volts. Alter alternatively, you could just take the wire out from the other side. I think if you pry up the bottom here. So these are gonna go on here with ground over here, five volts here, and then 17 and 18 we're gonna use for a TX, RX. And those are gonna be our four connectors. And this came in a pack just on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description and you can use these for a variety of the Mitsubishi CN105 units. All right, so I cut off pin one and then I used this to strip the ends of the cables and now let's attach it to the board. So first I took some flux and applied it to the areas where we're going to apply these wires, so the ground, five volt, and then the 18 and 17. I also applied a little bit to the ends of these by just sticking it in the flux so the solder will connect to where we need it to be. I'll just hold one of these wires with the two arm connector here so that it's statically in one of the pinholes. Now using two hands here, I'm gonna take my soldering iron and heat up this area as well as apply the solder to the connection and then that will make the first ground connection here. Now you can see it's made the connection and we'll go ahead and do the three other ones. Now the important part about these next two is that the third one up is TX on the Mitsubishi and then the very top one is RX on the Mitsubishi. However, on here you're gonna take note that I'm hooking up the TX to pin 18, which, was sh which should be RX on this ESP32, and 17 will be the opposite. So you wanna have them swapped. So from the Mitsubishi, the TX goes to the RX, and then the RX goes to the TX on the ESP32. And there we have it completed with all the wires connected up. And if you haven't gotten one of these cleaners for your soldering iron, highly recommend. Same thing with the two arms. I'll have the link for all those in the description and the flux. Now, I'm not a soldering expert, so I'm sure there's a much better way to do some of these things. I don't know if you really should solder the back, but looking at it here, it looks pretty fine. So I'm just going to keep it as it is. Here you can see the back and you can see the other sides of where I soldered. Okay, now that we have our ESP32 set up, and wired and ready to go. Let's set up our environment to install ESP Home on the ESP32. So I'm gonna be using a Python virtual environment as opposed to a Home Assistant add-on, which people usually use because they have Home Assistant set up in a way that they can add on ESP Home add-on to that. But I'm just gonna go with Python and show you the easy way to load it right onto this. So first we'll start with the empty directory. We're going to create a Python virtual environment by putting this command in here, which will create 
a virtual environment that we're going to activate into. Next, we're going to source because we're gonna activate into the virtual environment. As you can see, now we're in the virtual environment. Then we're gonna install ESP Home into that virtual environment by doing pip install ESP Home. Next, let's create the files that we're gonna to utilize to create our configuration. So we're gonna create a main.yaml and then a climate.yaml, connection.yaml, and a secrets.yaml. So let's go ahead and open up main. Now in main, we're going to put in a series of YAML information, which I'll have a link in the description for all of my code in GitHub. So as you can see here, this is the main area. So at the top, we have substitutions. These are gonna be convenient variables that are gonna replace throughout your files and throughout the GitHub project. Then we have the ESP home, which will be, the, the variables will be replacing those device name, friendly name. ESP32 configuration for what board you have. In my particular situation, we have the ESP32 S3, logging level, and then the Home Assistant API, which uses a secret, which we'll get into. And then finally, we have our includes. So like you saw, we made a connection.yaml and a climate.yaml, so we don't have one giant file. We don't need to include the secrets.yaml because it will automatically pick it up during build time. So let's go ahead and replace the device name. So I'm going to actually use the Mitsubishi for my living room and for the friendly name, I'm going to do the same thing with spaces instead of dashes for the friendly name. And we can save that. Next, we'll do our connection YAML. So let's go over to connection.yaml and this has all of our information for the password to over the air update for the firmware the information to connect to the Wi-Fi and a fallback hotspot if necessary, and then a captive portal, which seems to be a standard thing to include for a lot of ESP Home. These are gonna be mostly secrets, so we'll get to that in a second. So if we open up our secrets file, as you can see here, they're the variable names that have been defined in our connection.yaml and our main.yaml. So we have the Wi-Fi SSID, the password, the over-the-air password, AP password, and then finally, our Home Assistant API encryption key. Now you can go ahead and fill out all the information that pertains to you. For the Home Assistant API encryption key, this is the new method of connecting with Home Assistant. So we need to generate that encryption key. And you can do that with the following command. Now you can take that value here and paste it, including the equal sign at the end. Now this will be generated, as you can see, I can generate a brand new one and it'll be different each time. Now, once you have your secrets filled out, let's go ahead and go over to climate, and this will be the main area to configure the Mitsubishi information. So again, I'm copying this in because it's way too much to type. And as you can see here, we have the source of the GitHub project that I've been referencing, Mitsubishi CN105 ESP Home. And so it'll pull in all that information, as well as your UART information, the baud rate, transmit and RX pins. So if you take a look at what you soldered up in ours, we did 17 and 18. So you'll have to make sure that the TX goes to the RX on the Mitsubishi in the connection pin, as well as the RX goes to the TX on the Mitsubishi connecting pin. So you have to make sure that the RX goes to the TX and the TX goes to the RX. Next, we just have a convenient sensor timer, which has the substitution with the friendly name and then we have our climate entity configuration. So this is what's going to pop up in Home Assistant and it's gonna be replaced with your substitution values for the name, the type of icon, and then all of your settings that you would prefer. These are mostly the default settings. I've disabled a few of the sensors and the things that don't apply to my particular unit, but feel free to look at the YAML yourself. But the most important thing here is the pin information. So we can go ahead and save that. Now, when you're happy with your YAML configuration and the sensors you want to include, maybe you want to enable the Bluetooth proxy, things like that. We're just going bare bones here. You can do ESP Home, clean your YAML file, the one that is main, which includes all of your other includes, and ESP Home compile with your main YAML. So this will go ahead and download all of the information from GitHub, as well as replace your substitutions, merge your YAML, take in your secrets.yaml, and make it into something that we can flash 
onto the ESP32. When it's finished, you'll hopefully see a success. It took around 60 seconds on this M2 MacBook Air. It might take a little longer depending on the machine you have. Now let's go ahead and connect up our ESP32. So on this particular ESP32 S3, we're gonna use the left USB-C because they have different use cases for each one. And if you plug in the other one, it'll show up as a modem. So when you plug it in, you'll see some LEDs light up. So now that it's plugged in, we're gonna check our dev TTY to see what device we wanna use. And even though it does say modem, this one is the one that you actually do wanna to use to flash on the left-hand side because the right-hand side didn't work for me. So now we're going to do ESP home, upload main.yaml device, and then this particular device. And you will see it flash the ESP32. Now let's connect it to our Mitsubishi device. First, we're gonna shut the device off and then lift up the top. And we're gonna unscrew the screws here, here, and then there's a hidden screw right here. Next, we, after we take the screws out, you can pull on this top to take the top off. Now once you have the top off and the screws are moved, this whole piece just sort of slides right off. Just be careful with the sensor down here at the bottom. Next, we can remove this screw here. So we're gonna remove this plate. And this just kind of pulls to the right and then slides out. And you can see here is the red CN105 connector that we're gonna connect it to. So I'm gonna take the tabbed side of the connector, plug it in the left-hand side here. And you'll see the LEDs come on. I'm gonna route the cables right where the other cables go along so it can sit right here. Now, while we have this open, just double check that you can see this device in Home Assistant before you close this all up. And I'll probably clean these filters too. Now you have the ESP Home hooked up to the Mitsubishi unit and you either put it back together or you're testing it out now. So if we go over to Home Assistant and we go to the integrations, it should pop up under your ESP Home integration. If you don't have the ESP Home integration, which is different from the ESP Home add-on, definitely add the integration at the bottom right. In here, you should be able to add the living room Mitsubishi unit or the unit that you configured. In my case, I added the Bluetooth proxy with the living room climate configuration. Then it'll ask you for your encryption key and that's what we generated earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and input that here. And now we've added the device to Home Assistant. And now I'm gonna add it to my living room area and you can see with the variety of other ESP Home devices I have set up, this one is now there. If we go to the device, you can see the firmware, you can see the MAC address, energy usage, all these different sensors, and you can see it's off right now. So we can go ahead and click on that climate configuration, and we have all of our options here. You can enable and disable them to match what your device can actually do, since some can only cool or some can do both cool and heat. A variety of fan modes, swing modes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on cool. Now you should be able to notice that the Mitsubishi turned on in cool mode. From here, you can monitor a series of other sensors, like the energy usage that it is taking up, the outside air temperature. I configured a restart button to restart the ESP Home and other diagnostic data like the stage, the sub mode, compressor frequency, runtime hours, if those are supported on your device. So I hope this helped anybody looking to make their Mitsubishi unit smart and connect it up to Home Assistant. I was trying to make something straightforward to follow along with so that others could accomplish the same. I'll have all of the links for products that I use for the ESP Home, the wires, and my GitHub code for the YAML files, all in my description. So feel free to go check those out. And if you're looking for more customization and more in-depth knowledge, definitely start by checking out the main GitHub repository. Eric Shavit from France, I think is the main contributor, and he has been great in terms of updating and staying on top of this repository. So a huge shout out to them, making this possible for us to connect it up to Home Assistant. Thanks again for watching, and let me know if you have any questions, and I hope this helped.